I am Mr. Bugsy from Lewisham, the Blue Borough, you know, co-host of Blue Tick, Serious Banter, here with my co-host. Mr. D, go Dan, Mr. Serious Banter, and today we have a special guest in the building, pleasure to have him here, would you like to introduce yourself? Appreciate it, my name's Bobby Kasanga, um, founder of Hackney Root Football Club, and yeah, I'm here for the Serious Banter. Yeah, let's go. Let's get into this. Mm. Right. So first thing I want to ask you is to explain kind of people why we even want to interview you. Mm. Because just for those who don't know who you are, yeah. I want you to I want them to understand have a some of understanding of exactly why we came to you yeah. and wanted you to come on here. Alright, cool. So um I'm originally from Peckham. Uh used to be involved with the Peckham boys and ended up spending eight years in prison. And in those eight years some of it was good, some of it was bad, but I decided to get education while I was there. Upon my release five years ago, um, I created Hackney's first ever semi-professional football club. So I owned that football team with two partners and uh, we played in the 10th division of British football. We run a charity, we've got a production company. Uh, we just, yeah, we're trying to do the most, man. We've got a charity and like a youth centre that we run as well. So yeah. So out of, out of the negative came positive. 100%. Uh, how, how did you make that how, how did your mind how was your mind frame taking that process because obviously I've been to jail as well I've done a little time I was a ghetto boy mm. it's even a miracle that we're here even oh, having a conversation <laughs> we've come a long way mm. so, so I understand what the mindset yeah. but for the for the youngins that watch this mm. what was the point inside jail because I know when you got, when you first got there mm. like most people when they get to jail you're still angry so yeah. you're just like mm. but what was the point where you said, this is it, I've had enough of this enough. nonsense. Um, I think it took the time when uh, they released me temporarily and then I messed up my um, probation and they want me back in again. And then I realised, you know what, I can't keep doing this. And they sent me to Pentaville and I was in Pentaville and I was seeing these guys that were like, one, one white guy that I knew like swimming in jail ages ago and he'd come out He's like, oh yeah, I'm back in. I got 15 years now. I'm like, fucking hell. And he's like, he's a career criminal. He says, I'm always in and out, in and out. But this time they gave me a stiff bird. I was like, I don't want that to be my life. I was 23 at the time. I was young. I was like, nah, I can't keep coming in and out of jail. I got a daughter. So that's what galvanized me. I said, you know, I'm going to get education while I'm here. Definitely. Strangely enough, that. imagine that yesterday, somebody that I was in jail with, I left jail 2012. So I left him, to, he left me 2011. Strangely enough, someone phoned me from jail yesterday. They're all in high point. He's doing 15 years. Fucking hell. You, it, it, jail's a funny thing because it's always the same people. Mm. Same faces. Yeah. Like, it's one circuit and you'll always bump into the same people mm. on the circuit. So, I, I get that. I get that. Now, how, how, obviously, you're a Peckham boy. Mm. Man's a ghetto boy. Mm. Uh, how did you get out of that? How did you leave that behind? Because when, I'm, when I made my transition... Mm. There was a lot of funny looks. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like people, people wasn't, I don't know, people didn't want me to make mm. that change. Yeah. So was it the same for you? Uh, with me, it's a bit easier because my brother's the one who had more reputation than I did. Yep. I was around. So like the sort of, I, I've said it before on the story that of how I became a Peckham boy, one of them tried to rob me and then it was younger Ray, but he went, now nah, what are you doing? That's Carly's brother. And from the back of that, like, oh yeah, you're one of us. So I was recruit. I was recruited kind of falsely, just on the pretense of my <laughs> brother's name. So By then, default. yeah. So you can you, you play up to that part where I wouldn't say I was the bad boy, but now I'm part of it. So if them and I gonna mash work, you hesitant, be like, fuck it, I'm gonna go with them as well. Definitely. So the transition for me was a lot easier because it got a situation where my brother was just getting to passes with everyone, and where our parents' house is, it's still the same place there, right where everyone hangs around. So whenever there's an issue, there'll be people at the mum's house and so on. But I had a big argument with my parents when I was 17. So I was like, oh, fuck this man, I'm, I'm going to live in East London with my other family. Okay. So I sort of left Peckham at 17, so it was easier. Whereas, like, for others who were sort of hardcore, who were more well-known, if someone saw them in ghetto or something, they'd be like, that's that, that's my man. But where it was with us, it was with me, I was sort of more low-key. So it was easier. It wasn't like, a, I'm, I'll go to everyone, yeah, I'm repping Peckham because... I went to play for Santley Football Club. That's a team in Brixton. Yep. So there's always that, you know what? He's involved, but he's not involved. How did that work out? Because that time I'm sure Brixton and Pickham were worse than Ghetto and Pickham. Nah, that's what I'm saying. But the, the, I'll, give, I'll give credit to the coach. His name was um, Nana or Kofi. Is it? Definitely a Ghanaian name. 
and he come and recruit us from our school and he like don't worry when you come to Brixton I'll let them know that you guys play for the team and all the Brixton boys that like, some of the main Brixton boys of my generation those was like very cool because they just wanted to play football as well yeah. they'll have banter go oh here comes the Peckham boy sort of thing but it, it was mostly cool but the transition is up to you it's up to 100% you. 100% that's a blessed story still gotta respect the guy even me I've, I've, I've done the whole jail thing and you get me? I had to turn my life around through then. Um, when I started doing it, it weren't cool at all. I mm. come out and I got myself a job. We weren't a gang member, you get me? But mm. I was always affiliated with, mm. with the road and gang members. So, yeah, it's just about showing the young kids that we can get this done. You understand? There's nothing fun about being in jail. How old, were you, how old were you guys when you kind of said, you know what, enough's enough? I was 18 when I got my sentence. <laughs> I came out when I was 20. So I stayed in, I've done a gas course, you get me? And it was by default myself. I put my name down to do a course one day. And um, yeah, six months later, they come and spoke to me and said, yeah, Mr. Reed, put your name down for a course. You're going to start doing this gas stuff. And um, yeah, and I've stayed working for the same company for 15 years. That's so big, man. No, 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 no one talks about their working man like that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, always tell these young people, like, Everyone wants to make the quick money. I was there, I want to make the quick money. But the consequence that come with it is not worth it because you could work for, like you said, for 15 years and made that same amount of money. Definitely. No one teaches these young kids this. Definitely. Well, yeah, we weren't taught that at all. My st- so, yeah. My story's a bit different. I'm I'm still pretty new to it. Mm. I'm, what, five years off? Okay, well. Five years off the road? Mm. Yeah, last time I went to prison, 2014. So, yeah, I came out. I'd say, yeah, I came out. I was probably, I, even when I came out at 214, I was still, I didn't, I, my heart weren't in it like it was before, mm. but I was still in it. Do you know what I mean? Um, last time I went to prison, I didn't, I can honestly hand on heart say I never committed an offence. Yeah. And I love all the man them, but I was, I only went to jail because I didn't open my mouth mm. and I don't think I got treated how I should have got treated. Yeah. So that was kind of the wake up, like, mm. rah, like man's here keeping it 100 and, no one ain't checking for me. Like, no one's not looking after me. Like, this is mad. Mm. Man, they're talking about not snitching. I've done it. So how come man ain't holding up their end of the bargain? Mm. Like, I need peas. Mm. I'm on the wing. I'm broke. I need mm. I need stuff. But that was kind of my wake up call. Then I have to big up my girl still. Because when I came home, I met a girl and she proper helped me yeah. get my shit together. And I will always say this, behind every good man, there's a good woman. No, I, I, on that note, a shout out my girl. She's actually from Catford actually as well. And like, I met her like a year after I come out of jail. And for me, I was nervous. I always tell her about this. I was nervous because she was high maintenance. Nice car, nice job. I'm like, I'm fresh off road, like fresh off jail. Like, and when we went to date, I was putting it off. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to be in this relationship because you're freaking to try and keep up with her. Like, I need to go into a madness. But I was honest with her. I said, you know what? Right now, I've never even got it. I'm coming out of jail. I'm trying to build. But she saw the vision. That's why I rate her to this day. Because she saw the yeah, vision. Like, we're four, four years deep into it. And like now, she's like, right, you've actually achieved everything you told me you're going to achieve. Still, still going strong. Still going strong. That's, that's dope. I rate strong. that. I rate that, I rate that. So I want to talk about, you know what it is, yeah? We have to talk about some of the beef, innit? Because mm. the people them are going to want to know. Because mm. I think I'm older than you. How yeah. are you? 34. Yeah, so I'm older than you. I'm more Giggs, Knox, yeah. Lee, mm. all them man there. That was my generation that yeah. I was having the back and forth and mm. the beef with. You would have been Smiley, maybe. I think my, if I remember one of the issues, I think it was more Smitty. Yeah. Uh, vet, veteran. Yes. Yeah, that, that, yes. That, that, that sort of um, era there, yeah. Cause, oh. Because <laughs> I kind of... I kind of got caught in with the wrong batch of the people that was really active in Peckham. So, like, at the time, so, the, the team I started with was sort of Younger Raver, Spen, Crafty, Pebla, um, yes. Maestro, Chester. So, these guys were active. Very. So, the sort of thing that where that, sometimes, when I think about some of the stuff we used to do was so dumb. Like, we will jump on a bus and say, come, we're going ghetto. And we'll go, we'll go to St. Joseph's Academy because we knew some of our friends were there and we just go and start trouble. And I think I even told a story one time where we went to a party in New Cross and there wasn't a lot of us. There was only quite a few of us. And I, I, I talk about Chester for some reason. Where's the get-up boys? Where's your leader? Where's Victor? Where's your leader? I'm thinking to myself, is this guy mad? We're outnumbered sort of thing. What, what's he doing? But you're kind of forced to back it. At the time, and then I think um, Sparks, rest in peace, he came. And then all of a sudden, 
Yeah, we, we got beaten up that day. <laughs> <laughs> we got beaten up that day. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. ran, everyone tried to escape. Everything man. changes when he shows up. <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone turns into Superman yeah, when he yeah, shows up. Yeah. Once he shows up, everyone's, everyone's good to go. What are you saying, man? Nah, <laughs> I'm just listening. Listen, listen. listen. I'm a gang member, so it's nice to air these mm. stories. You never, you never had no interactions with no Beckham no, ever? No, I've had interactions. Like I come up on a wing of, I come up under a wing of, of a couple of the older Beckham boys. You get mm. me shouts, ah, oh, you know who you are. Mm. You get me? And yeah, I just, I just kind of stayed out of it. I was all about money from young though. Mm. You understand me? So the, you see the beef thing, it weren't really for me. I used to go to St. Joseph's school. Oh, yeah. But what was nice about that is that we had people from every end, mm. you get me? Triads, Brixton, News, Peckham, and we all got on mm. in school. So you get me? Out of school, I never really had no issues. The only no, what's problems mean? I really had issues with was uh, Woolwich boys. You okay. understand me? Hey, Growing up. You know what's mad about St. Joseph's, yeah? Mm. I'm not going to say their names, but it was two guys. No, one went Northbrook, one went St. Joseph's, yeah? You know, for the whole time they was at school, they were so cool with us. Mm. Yeah, see the moment they yeah, left St. Joseph's. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, them, yeah, yeah. you see the day. Mm. I saw, I, I didn't even know we had problems. Mm. I remember I was going past on the bus and my mum was just ice grilling me for an hour. Mm. I'm seeing her, what's going on mm. here? We was all right a week ago, what's happened? <laughs> you know, it is, and that, that is so true in regards to all these kids who are in school now. Because where I live now, uh, well, I live in, in Woolwich, but we've got a, a, a spot in Hackney as well. Where it is that, for example, London Fields and, and Homerton, mm -hmm. two areas close to each other. So the kids who go to schools from year 7 to year 11, they're all friends. As soon as year 11 is done, they're going to college. It's beef. Yeah, you, think, yeah, you guys were mad. friends for all these years. It's crazy. And they just have these And if you ever ask them why they're beef, and a lot of them, they could not tell you the reason why mm. this beef has ever started. Right. They're mm. just literally riding a bandwagon. All right, then. You want, me to give you, the, you want me to give you the funniest story about me? Mm. I'm originally from Birmingham. I moved from Birmingham when I was three years old. I moved to Camden Estate. Okay, you're right, Peckham. Yeah, my brothers, my brothers are older Peckham boy, Devil okay. You might have heard of him. He's okay. like MPB, okay, old Peckham yeah, boy yeah. days. So I moved to Camden Estate. I lived on Camden Estate and I moved Lewisham Way, get old Broccoli sides when I was what, nine, mm. ten. So I'm kind of well traveled. I went I went Oliver Goldsmiths. Okay. So I went to school with a lot of a lot of Peckham youths. And exactly what you're saying. I don't even want to say it was a peer pressure thing, but it kind of was because I kind of fell into where I was. It yeah. wasn't, I didn't go out there saying, I'm going to be a gang member or I'm a bad man or I fell into it. Mm. And obviously, if a lot of people won't know about North Peckham back then, but North Peckham was a big gang hub. As a, as a child, the first, like, my first ever interaction with gang stuff was North Peckham boys. Versus ghetto boys, mm. and I saw a man get stabbed on Frontline opposite Warwick Park. Yeah. I think I must have been eight or nine, yeah. and I, and like that's my first ever remember of gang stuff. Like, mm. oh, I remember my brother and his friends. Like, yeah, you man on the estate, whatever North MPB, whatever, whatever. Mm. But my first actual like seeing another gang and another gang have beef, I was like nine or ten, and from that point, it was kind of normalized. Mm. Like, I kind of got as as time went on. You become desensitized to mm. things. And a lot of kids they they fall into this gang life, innit? It all depends where you live, who you know. Do you mm. understand? You gotta realise people when you're young, people just wanna be a part of something. Mm. It's that one big family. Mm. Do you understand me? But I say that because I grew up in a Gloucester estate and then when they knocked down that whole estate, we moved to the new place where my parents live now. And the other day, um I was filming around there and we lived in uh, number twenty two. But for some reason, I don't know what happened, what God was doing that day, but that day I went there, like everyone who grew up in the area were there visiting for some reason or were just there that day. And I'm like, rah, I see a guy called Shinner who lived in number 34, uh, Javen who lived in 25, and rest in peace, his brother Marcus Fraser died. But like, all these kids were all grew up on the same street, but not everyone turned out bad. Shinner went on to go into finance, Javen works in engineering, uh, Dami done something else. So it's, not necessarily where you grew up. Of course, that, that's a big factor. Mm. And what I always say, because when I was in jail, I'd done criminology and social policy. And it's like, all these factors affect you, right? In terms of parents, household income, peer pressure, where you come from, who, the people you're around. But ultimately, it's your decision. Definitely. Ultimately, ultimately, it's always your decision. Definitely. I won't lie. At 13, when I started going house parties with the man them and realising, yo... Man's a little face in it. Mm. Like, yo, gal, them are feeling, man. Come, man's with gang. Mm. It was inspirational for me to do more gang mm. stuff. No, I'm At 13, like, like, I'll never say that I'm famous or nothing, but I've mm. definitely been blue famous, where I've mm. been I've been a very well-known man in my area. Mm. And 
I got a bit of respect for whatever work, whatever idiot little mm. piece of work I felt like I was putting yeah, in at the sure. time that was big and dope. Mm. I got a little ratings for it. And mm. yeah, that did in that did push me to want it more. But also, the OGs that were around me at the time, what they were feeding me mm. was was crazy stuff, innit? Because I had like above me, you will say there's Sparks, the twins. They weren't showing you Zags. Yeah, man. No one ever. Love, no one ever showed man nothing. No mm. one ever showed man nothing good. Man, like if I come from an era before guns and knives, really, like so. When we grew up, Basically, it was it was no, it was really about who could fight. Like mm. it was definitely like who can rock. Mm. Can man rock? Mm. That was man's word. Like I'll bang you up. It weren't really I'm gonna bun you. Mm. It was like you buck a man. I'll bang you up. I'll mm. bust your head. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so. The, the 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 dynamics of gangs have 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 progressed and and changed. Obviously, you know how it goes. Once one person gets stabbed, man saying raw. I'm not getting stabbed. I'm rolling with my knife. Mm. Once one person gets shot, man raw. Then man playing with. But guns. do you think you think drugs plays a big part in it turning from fist fights to now knives and guns? Because now people are getting money. Now you have to Definitely. protect it. Like for Definitely. example, you said you was more say about your money, mm -hmm. and I know firsthand in Peckham. If someone saw that, oh, my man's about to make money, you ain't, they're going to try and rob him. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think, and you ain't just going to rob someone. protect yourself. Yeah. Mm, definitely. 100%, I agree with that. Definitely. Money changed everything though, innit? Mm, it Once does. money started making, it was no longer fun. Mm. It was pressure, there was pressure to have money, man started getting clothes, mm. there was, yeah. so many things just, money just changed the whole dynamic of the thing. Before mm. money, we were a bunch of friends that used to have a little tear up and whatever mm. and a little Barney go parties and bully people but it wasn't as serious as it got yeah. when money got into mm. it. Do you get what I'm saying? And that go, I don't understand that because Peckham boys never affected our money. Yeah. So I don't understand how it got more serious with you lot mm. when money came into play. I think at the same time there's still that whole reputation of this is our ends and that's their ends. You have to so it's and the thing is it's very tribal. It's not always just even if you go back to ancestrals and Africa, there was tribes fighting against each other. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing new in terms of someone being from this area or someone being from that mm -hmm. area. You see it also in regards to some of the working class and middle class footballers. You got the West Ham fans and the Millwall fans. They meet yeah, up. It's, it's a passive sort yep. of thing. So that's yep. always been there. So you're all gonna sort of kind of protect your territory. But I think money definitely starts infecting people within your own area. Yep. That's when the problems, yeah. that's when the problems become in-house. Mm. Civil wars. That, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. the right yeah. word yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah. Civil wars. That's when it's like, raw man's doing better than me. To peg him down. Like, my man don't deserve, I put in more work than my man. Mm. Why is he up? Like, mm. so I know that, I know that mentality because mm. I've been there, innit? I can't, yeah. I can't say that I haven't done some wrong things in my life that I would never be proud of and show off to people because, mm. That's the reality of the life that we've lived, isn't it? We come from a come from a bad place. Mm. But you know what? At the end of the day, we're here now giving you some good gems, you know. I hope mm. you lot listen. It's the, it's the question I asked the other day, and I, and it's one, one video I've done recently, and there's an issue that happened 13 years ago. And let's say, for example, we're all friends, us three, right? Like, good friends, right? And then some madness happened to you like someone violated you but you've never known who it was I've never known who it was and then next man told me oh you know what it was my man all this time and this happened 13 years ago but now you guys are all good and everyone's what do you what do you do in that position because everyone tell me no oh, Bobby you're a snake you should tell my man that it was and I said to myself like if I go and reopen that whole thing yes. and then someone going to do a madness of someone else it's and then back. it's on my back mm -hmm. but at the same time people are telling me you can't just watch them man like that and be cool with it. so I'm like Bro, you know what? See no evil, hear no evil. Yeah, That's moved yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, but at the same time, I look at my man and feel like, Rah, yeah, but so. you know what that is, isn't it? Mm. That's your growth. Mm. That's your growth. And that's you having empathy and compassion for other people because you mm. don't want things to happen to other people. Mm. Because probably, maybe 10 years ago, you'd have been like, blood, don't lie. My man done a madness to you, you know, mm. get him. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But you've learned over, like living off experience, mm. isn't it? So, so you have to go through certain things to realize certain things. This is why government yeah, don't understand. Goes why we behave, mm. how we behave. Because mm. they've never sat at home with cockroaches mm. and, and no money. And then under, then when you get money, your head's a bit giddy. Mm. You never had Definitely. money before. Definitely. Mm. Now, touching mm. on that, I, I watched one of your videos the other day and mm. yeah, I could see the growth in a, in a man like yourself. Because you saw 
I see um, some kids being chased, uh, you being chased yeah, down by some yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. You took it upon yourself to jump out of your car. I can't and- lie. I can't lie. I, I was hesitant because mm. I'm, dri- I'm doing my food. Every Sunday I do my food deliveries. And when I can't get a driver, I do it myself. And I got through my house and I see a fellow just with a bunch of teenagers. I'm letting them cross. I see one of them is hyped, hyped. And then I think, what's going on? about six or seven of them. So I thought, oh, they must be playing around. And I look again. The other one's like, come here now, come here now. Mm. Then the other two just looked and dust off. Mm. And they grabbed the other one and then marching him. I think to myself, do I get involved? Do I not get involved? I've got mm. a family. Mm-hmm. And then I started driving and I pulled down the window. I said, guys, don't fight. And the guy like, nah, nah, we're not fighting, big man. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. And I said, come here, man. I drove down and I thought, nah, it don't, it don't sit well with me. I have to jump out. So I thought, let me tell the people, like, look, yeah, if a madness happens, if a madness happens, I'm late. That's when I knew it was serious. <laughs> right. That's when I knew it was serious. <laughs> but, but when I've gone there, I can't see the kids. So I think that they've dispersed. So I'm thinking to myself, so I'm also around. Did you see the people? Now we didn't see where they went. You made some impact. So at the same time, it's like, you have to think about your own, be a bit selfish. Because when I told my missus, like, you mad, what are you doing? You got, you got a family, you can't be doing that. Mm-hmm. At the same time, if it was one me, of your children, mm, if it was someone you loved, you would want someone to kind of mm, reach out and do the same. Mm, Definitely, these. So kids, I see that still. These kids are these kids nowadays. They're very dangerous, and I don't think half of them understand what they're rolling with or, or what, what they're, they're doing. Because mm. because like you walk around with a knife the size of your leg and you stab someone, they're gonna die. What do you think? What do you think is changing? Because no nobody was hanging around with rambles. <laughs> internet man. access to the internet. Mm. Internet the is the most. Web. Internet mm. is the most being delivered to your house. Mm. Like, all right, then, me. I'll give you an example. Chief Keith has changed the whole world mm. in regards in regards to even UK drill music. In mm. regards to the, the way the, the way UK gangs work now, mm. that's all based off of Chicago. Mm. Whereas when we was young, we didn't know what was going on in Chicago. Mm. Like I, I say it all the time, we only knew what was going on in your hood. Mm. My hood and the other hood yeah, that we yeah, was beefing. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't care about you lot liking mm. me. I only cared about YGB and YBM. Mm. They were the only people that mattered. Mm. If you weren't part of the cool kids in that, F you. You weren't part of the thing, so mm. you don't matter. Mm. Where now... They want to be liked by everyone. A hundred people, like... Yeah, yeah, you yeah. see it. Like, even the other day, we had these little son in there. Mm. And we started an Instagram for this. Mm. We got a couple followers. He was like, oh, you got more followers than me already. Mm. I'm like, look, you don't even know that's a, that's pressure that you're putting mm, yourself pressure. on. Like, don't do that. Like, mm. but this is the way of the it's world the now. No, hundred percent. And what, what what I agree, I guess, with the internet is like, me and you could have a fight, right? With, before the internet, me and you could have a fight. They're like, oh, yo, no, nah, my man beat up Bobby, you know, and that's all that's heard about it. Now, someone had a camera on there showing how you <laughs> beat me up, Definitely. and then. People are laughing, they're trolling, they're coming. I'm like, nah, I have to get mine back. 100%. So what they started doing was people go from different ends. Well, we, we're in your block now. We're in your block yeah, now. What are yeah, you yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's documented. Mm. It never. The time. Remember what it is. Time's a great healer. Mm. But when something documented, that you it can always goes, be brought yeah, back there is no, to that yeah, emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always be brought back to that exact point. Mm. So if a man, if I was on camera getting, if I was on camera getting beat up, yeah. If I didn't see you for four years mm. and then someone showed it to me four years later and I saw you the day after, it's still gonna be I mean, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. So that's like, um, not to sort of speak on names, and that's like killing that's happened, um, uh, recently where someone done a madness to someone years, 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 years back and it was a proper violation. And then obviously, mama's changed his life around, but the other brothers supposedly never forgot that. Like, raw, you done this 20 years ago, it's cited my man, and that's it's peak. Yeah, so that's these nice. things there. That are still yeah, going yeah. on. Certain people. You heard what road. Pac said. Everyone's got different. Always got to worry about the payback. Mm. Some punk that I roughed up way back. Yeah, it's real, man. Like growth, innit? But can we get off of this negative? Mm. We've been talking about definitely. gangs. We've been talking about gangs for ages. Definitely. How, you know what, I mean? what I would like to know, Mister, mm. um, how you started this whole big ego entertainment mm. movement because that has taken off. Like, Proud of you, man. Done yeah. proper with that. Now you know what is is basically by chance. So literally this Sunday, I'm about to release episode one of a drama series that I'm doing. But I wanted to release episode one and see how that does and before we commit to anything else. But remember I said when I was in jail, I wrote two books. Okay. So the books were based on um, a murder that happened in Peckham in 2007 when um, a, a young boy was killed in his bed, a case of mistaken identity. Mm-hmm. I remember um, that. I was arrested for it as one of the suspects because they were adamant it was me. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with me, mm-hmm. but circumstances would make you feel that it was me. So the people who they say had done it, then end up getting 30 years each. 
So while I was in jail, everyone used to ask me the story. Like, what happened? What happened? I thought, you know what? Let me actually write a story about this. Also use fictional characters and talk about my whole journey of trying to be, play semi-pro football. And also um, the situation you that led know. me to get, to, to, to get arrested. So okay. I had to teach kids like, rah, if you've got something good going on for you, keep going because this will distract you. Mm. I'd done that, had a phone in jail, was giving people snippets on road. It was like, oh, you know, you need to release this, man. Everyone's buying the books. So I released them via Amazon. So what's the book's name, please? Called The Life I Live, Not The Life I Chose. So that's mm. part one and part two. So through doing that, I got out of jail and people that read the book in jail out of jail like, yo, when are you going to make that to a movie? And I'm like, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And then, um, obviously, I started the football club back by, by then. So people recognised me through Arsenal Fan TV, through being on, on BBC, through the CNN. And that was, oh, you're, you're the football guy. Then because I was doing this um, sort of story based around Peckham, this drama, I said, okay, I'm going to do the drama series. So I hired a lot of the young people that I work with. So the guys, we're going to shoot this drama series based on a 15-year-old who got killed I need you guys to be the actors as part of a project. So there's all for it. So to sort of set the scene for people to understand what's going on, I want people to get used to Peckham. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to start talking about the different stories of the different murders that have happened okay. in Peckham. Okay. So be like, this is a story sense. of Gavin. This is a story of... So yes. take you through that history. So when the series comes out, you know what it's all about. But it became so popular... That people say, oh, do one on Lewisham, do one on someone in Brixton, do and someone. And you did, yeah, and you did because I've seen them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're actually tough. And they then they, tough. They, they, it started popping off, popping off, popping off, and um, to the point like they was getting something like hundred thousand views just via um, Instagram. And then I thought, okay, cool, I'm gonna start putting it on YouTube. So I put it on YouTube. I got to five thousand subscribers, and it was sort of stayed there. This one day, I was having a rant about something. I think someone told me something. again, like what we spoke about the kids. And I was having a rant about these kids. I said, these kids gone out there bad, but when they go to jail, this will be something that's mad that's going to happen to them. I done that video, put it on my um, Instagram. It flew. Like people in America contacted me. I thought, oh, let me put it on YouTube. Put it on YouTube. And it just went. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, okay, let me try another one. So I said, oh, this is still how I got recruited as a Peckham boy. And that's about to touch 400,000 views now. Wow. wow. And because of that, I think COVID played a part because everyone's at home. No one's allowed out. And I'm popping up on someone's YouTube. Oh, let me check this out. And then people are sharing it and spreading it. And it just grew and grew and grew to the point I said, you know what? I don't want the platform to just to be about negativity. Because we're just about to hit 50k subscribers. So I'm to the point that where, as you guys know, I came here a couple of months ago. I was trying to tell you guys what to do yep. in terms of things like that as well. And I bought my bridge in Goodlid. I said, look, talk about your history as well. Your... And he started doing it. He's on 10k subscribers now. Mm-hmm. So what I've been trying to do to build a platform now is that if you got a concept or a show that I like, I'm saying, okay, pull up my platform. Whatever money that comes through advertising from it, you get it. And if you think that you get to a point where you're getting enough views for yourself, pull it on your own channel. So therefore, I'm trying to make it into like a media yeah, 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 corporation yeah, yeah. where I take people's shows, pull it out there for them. And then so I've got a girl called um, Shanette Carlio who gives advice to women because my audience is 93% men. So I thought, let's try to get some women on there as well. <laughs> so she's on this, so she's doing her thing. So slowly, slowly trying to build into a little media kind of portfolio where I, I, I'm like a BBC basically I, do, I put different shows so I'll get to the point that where I'm going to start buying the camera equipment start buying the sound equipment and, yeah, and all that as well so and yeah and that's how it works yeah, I rate that still that Literally is a power from nowhere that's big you yeah. see you see and that's the main reason why I needed him to come on the show because I want I, I, obviously I'm here but I haven't achieved anything what, like what he's achieved and I need everybody to understand that your past doesn't define your future mm. and Everything ultimately comes down to traces. Traces affect next traces. So you make a trace today, it affects the traces mm-hmm. what you have to make tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that's how life works. Do you understand? So I need like young boys, my little brothers, my little cousins, all my little friends, all the little young Gs that are out there feeling like they're trapped because I know there's like, out of every gang, probably only 15, 20 men want to do it. Mm-hmm. The that's rest good. of them are doing it because it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because they want to do it. Mm. It's they're doing it because they're cool. You can always tell the 15 that mm. want to do it because they want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And then you've got the other man that are in the background. Some man are just love it for the girls. Mm. Some man are in it so no one don't trouble them. Mm. Like there's always, there's so many different reasons why people do that stuff. And I just and wanted what, to big you up on that. I appreciate it, man. And what I, I let people know is that I've come out of jail to own a football club, but I've done it without even having money in the first place. That's what I want to touch on. Mm. How, what what made you make that decision that you wanted to do that? Obviously, I know you was a part of semi yeah. football growing up, but 
How? Like, no. Did you pull that off of the ground? How? Uh, so basically, I play semi pro. So I knew semi pro, you can earn anything from like thirty pounds to about two to three bills a week, and have another job on top of that. And I saw some cold footballers in jail. I'm like, bro, you're hard. But they didn't know what semi pro football was at all. Okay. I'm like, bro, there's a whole division of football after professional, you know, that will give you good money. So once I got out of jail, I was 28 years old, and I went to go and play football game. I was like, I'm 28, I'm going to turn 29 soon. I signed for my club, my old club, Corinthian Casuals. They're based in Polworth and Surrey. I just found that they're trotting and you're going there, you're unfit, you're not really playing matches. So I thought, let me look for a local team in and around the Hackney area. I'm doing my research, and people are like, oh, there's no really no semi pro team around here. So I just do my fitness in the park one day. I see a bunch of players cold. I'm like, wow, where are you guys? Some of them have been released by professional clubs and so on. Mm-hmm. They come there every day just to keep fit for pre season. I'm like, are you, man? I'm going to start a football team. They're looking at me like, you just come out, you just told us to come out, you're going to start a football team. I'm like, no, you're going to start a football team. I was excited about it. Once you're excited about something and you're passionate about it, you're going to make it happen. Definitely. So literally, I went home that day. Uh, so I'm going to call it Hackneywick FC because my biological home lived in the Hackneywick area. And then I put, um, I used the Hackneywick train station sign as the first sort of logo. And literally, I was spending about three to four hours every single day searching Hackneywick FC on so Hackneywick on Twitter so if Dwayne something mentioned Hackneywick I'll follow him if someone's bio said I live in Hackneywick I'll follow him then I'll private message them say Hackneywick FC coming soon so straight away because they've got affiliation to Hackneywick FC straight away they'll follow back oh we've got a local football team that's ourselves. real clever you know so from the back I did that spent three hours every single day it's jarring to the point that where it brought up quite a following and then some lady said, oh, I'm from Hackneywick. Um, I'm a brand designer. I want to design your badge for you. So thinking strategically, I'm a black man just come out of jail. She's a middle-class white woman. I said, look, I told her my situation. I said, would you like to come our, our chairwoman? She's like, yeah, 100%. So she came, became my chairwoman. And that. through that, it gave me sort of an angle to meet businesses. But every player that played for the team, when I started promoting it, I said, look, you have to go out and actually volunteer. Because if I want a favour from the the... Uh, what you call it the people that live in the area if I want you to come mm-hmm. to our matches the community to come to our matches they have to be feel some sort of affiliation to us mm-hmm. so I said okay we're going to volunteer so we put look if you guys are looking for young men to come and help you out in any so we bear people start contacting oh look come to this event come to that event so we'll do the run Hackney Marathon where we're giving out waters we're going to the local cemetery to help do stuff yeah, everywhere was going so people that. are saying oh who's this guy that's come out of jail and he's gathering at these young black people so straight away then the local newspaper started featuring me once the local news people start featuring, there's someone else who will see it. A company called Copper Knight, he came and said, um, this was before they even got bought out, they'd been, I think they'd be bought out by Universal. They said, oh look, we want to feature you. So they done an advert with me and Hyundai. When that came about, London Live interviewed me and through the back of that, I can now get sponsorship. I told people, look, we're on TV, you know, we're going to be on TV. Can we get local little sponsorship? So people give you 200 pound there, 500 pound there. Then there's a company, the Lowestown Pub, a guy called Declan Perkins, ex-pro player, he sponsored our first kits, so he bought all of our kits for us. At the same time, we still didn't have money. Literally, I would go out with buckets, all the bare charity buckets, and literally go outside of the Tesco's. We'll be there from 9 a.m. in the morning to 3 p.m. Literally, do you want to support our local football club? Some people look at me, yo, what are you doing? Can I just say one thing? Mm. I want everybody to hear this. Success is a byproduct of hard work. Mm. Definitely, and bro. That's what you're hearing right now. Success never came before the hard work. The hard work came, then mm. the success. Mm. Carry on. I just, needed, <laughs> nah. I just needed to say that. I just needed to say nah, that. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so we'll literally stand outside day to day and one person will come back, give you a pound. Next person will come, give you five pound. If a thousand people go past, give you a pound, that's a thousand pound. With that, when we started making that, we're like, right, cool, put that in the bank account. Go and buy kits. Go and buy uh, training equipment. Go and buy footballs. Register to the league. So I was very... On the, uh, I could see the rise of women's football as well. So I'm like, we can't just do men's football without women's football. So we start offering free women's football training. So they get the player, look, we want to do free women's coaching. So we started getting a lot of the white middle class women coming to the, because Pete Hackney was gentrified. Mm-hmm. So we started to get a lot of white middle class women wanting to play football, learn how to play. We'll come and get them free sessions. So then that become Hackney Week FC women's team. And once you start having that sort of backing of people seeing you, they all got contacts with different people from yeah. their own companies. Definitely. And then from that, do you yeah. have a women's team then, yeah? Yeah, we've got women's team, oh, men's up. team. Oh. And then through the back of that, Nike came and said, look, we love what you're doing. And it, it, this, was, this wasn't even Nike UK. This is Nike in the US. They said, like, right, we've been hearing about what you're doing. We're going to come and support. 
So there's even a little bit of tension between the US and UK team at the beginning because the UK team was like, why, why no one told us about this? So they came and got all of our youth in the youth center to design a whole kit for us. Sold that worldwide within minutes. Like everything was gone. Bah, bah, bah. So we're about to do a, Power a, a moves. new kit. About to do a I new hope kit. you're listening to this. So a new kit's coming out within the next couple of weeks with Gaffer, who are like a big um, media company who are also now are one of our sponsors. And even before that, when I got out of jail, you know, when you, when you, you, you make money, all of a sudden you ain't got money. There's that, there's that bit of shame and a bit of embarrassment. You come out of jail and you think, oh, I don't want to go and work at McDonald's or at Tesco, even though there's no shame in that. I say, you know what? I'm going to go and do a night shift. And this, this is where, this is where the, it's about how you apply yourself. I was doing a night shift at a bagel factory in Hackney Wick. So every night I finish training, I'll go and do work at a bagel factory until six o'clock in the morning. I found out a company called H Group were buying the, 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 the bagel company to build property on it. I sent an email to, this might be like one o'clock in the morning, I sent an email to the CEO of Age Group. I found, cause normally you don't find these people's, you don't find the, the chief executive Contact uh, emails. Details, yeah. But some, I done my research, I find these emails, I sent him to look, I use this job to fund my football club and I hear you're buying it. I just want to know, would you want to sponsor the football team? He told his secretary to, to, to um, email me to set up a meeting. They had the offices in Shoreditch. I went over there. I told them what I was doing. He said, right, cool, you don't have to work there no more. I'm just going to give you money every single month to run your football club. You just run your football club and I'll give you money every single month. So he put me on that. Then what he started seeing, wait a minute, this guy's always on TV. He's like, well, wait a minute, he's on BBC. I see my ITV. And they had a bit of bad press. They had some bad press over some another business that you had. So they must have said, look, we want you to help us create a charity. And what should we name it? So I was like, oh, our nickname is The Wickers. I was going to name it the Wickers Charity. So we named it the Wickers Charity. They put me on 28k a year salary. So from coming out of jail, all of a sudden now I'm earning 28k a year. But I ended up leaving the company because of other issues. Because I just thought that they were trying to do too much over my football club where I didn't think I could have a say. But like, thank you, but no thank you. One of the things that he said to me, I said, you can't remember. You have to always remember one thing. You're a man before anything else. There was a thing that where ITV once come and interview me. He's like, oh, you can't wear Hackney Wickers see stuff. You must wear our Wickers charity thing. I'm like, cool, no worries. Done that. The next day, ITV said, oh, come back to the, um, come to the studio and do a live thing. And he's like, oh, wear a Wickers charity again. I said, no, nah, I wore a Wickers charity the day before. I'm going to wear a Hackney Wick this time. Mm-hmm. My mum turned around and said, well, we pay your salary. So what we say goes. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, before anything, I'm a man. So I said, nah, ban this man. Because one thing they're trying to say that the money that we get from the night contract has to go to them as well. Because at this point, they're sponsoring everything in football club. They're paying, they give me 28k a year and they're giving 25 to 30k to the club a year on top of that. Okay. So any person in the right mind think, you know what? Let me just behave myself. Let me be a good little guy. I'm getting my money and they're giving me. I said, nah, I can't take that. My, my ego couldn't take it. And my missus like, are you crazy? She's pregnant at the time. She's like, bro, you struggled for the first year coming out. Now all of a sudden they're giving you this. And you, I said, babe. I can't do it. Yeah, you knew what <laughs> I said I can't work. do it, so I ended up quitting. And even now, they're still on the the the, 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 the charity. It's still there. They're still they're still running. And don't get me wrong, they're good people. They're good people. I I I, I had a good time there, but we just couldn't work together. Together. Mm-hmm. Um, through the back of that, I started just knowing how to sort of create sort of opportunities for myself. So me and my brother Clamper from Peckham, who's my business partner, we just started realizing, okay, how do we get money from funding? How do we get money from sponsorship that help us continue that we don't need to rely on anyone? So if today someone says, you know what, there's no money for you, we know we've got other avenues. Independence. That, 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 that comes to it. And then, like I said, even in jail, when I was writing my book, so I'm like, what are you doing? Are we writing a book for? Even though as much people enjoyed it. One officer in H&P Ford, I gave him the book to read. He's like, what, what is it with you prisoners? You guys think when you come out of jail, you're going to be on, on some bestseller or something? I ain't reading that shit. I'm like, rah. Oh. Like, that, that, I, got that. A sto- I got a story about that. I'm not going to say his name, but them trap star guys. Mm. I was in jail with one of them 2009. Mm. Obviously, man's in jail for guns, drugs, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's in there telling man he's going to sell clothes. Mm. You think we see his vision? Mm. You think man on the wing see that vision? Mm. What? My man's a nerd, blood. Mm. What's he talking about? Mm. Clothes. Blood, you're going home to rob people. <laughs> Shut up. Bro, I came out 2012. Mm. They, they had already started making clothes for Rihanna and Jay-Z. Trust me. Oh. Trust me. It, you got to stay, you got, um, like you said, innit? Passion, determination. Mm. 
We'll, we'll get you places. Oh, yeah, but when I, when, I, when I was said to me, I was like, I was like, right, you know, I was so excited about my book. I was so passionate about it. Mama said he just he just put a whole down on my day because in jail I was very entrepreneurial. I opened up a casino. I had a betting shop. I had a shop. Like I was the go-to person <laughs> for everything, and like everyone would saw me as jovial. Like literally, I'm, like, literally, I'll have a table like this, put a green cloth on it in the casino, and it's blackjack. People are buying chips, and I give people a fifty pound limit. Once you get fifty pound, because fifty pound. It's quick enough for me yeah. to win. When you have to find no, you can't play no more. Call your people, money has got an account. And then you've got 10, 15 people doing that all the time. Big so money, I was man. always, and that's what sort of helped me with my daughter while my, while my daughter was out because I couldn't like buy her stuff. So I'll send money to her mom to buy her the bike and buy her this. But when that also said that to me, just put a whole down on my day. So that sort of galvanized me to the point that now I'm represented by an agent at uh, North Bank Talent Management. And I met him by chance because I got invited to do a debate on Channel 5. Okay. And he just said, you know what, I, like, I love your story, so I'm going to sign you up. My man got the rights of my life story sold to uh, a company called Bad Wolf. And Bad Wolf, um, they make uh, Discovery Origin for Sky One. They make His Dark Materials for BBC One. All these things go to HBO. So they bought the rights of my story, so they're actually writing it now. It's going to be based on a fictional character who's just come out of jail and started their own football team. Oh, wow. So, You're a blessed kid, mate. So, yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's blessed, but it's also hard work. There's Definitely. no substitution for hard work. No way. That is no way. That is big That's stuff. You you, that is you crazy. That is mad. All right, let me ask you something. There's there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff in the media, yeah? I needed your opinion on this because I needed, basically, I needed to bring it up on the show. Mm. So, the other day, an 18-year-old girl was arrested mm. for... Leaving her daughter in the house, yeah, and her, and her for six days, and mm. her daughter died. Like, how do you do? You have any feelings on that? Do you think that could have been avoided? Because I don't know the whole story behind mm. it, so I don't want to. I don't want to come in here and gyrate her. Yeah. And she's this, she's that. Uh, I don't know the whole ins and outs. Hundred percent could have been avoided. Her sister's come out recently, and so I don't know if you guys see her sister's response and sort of explained the whole situation. Because I even put something up. A, a, there's a video that I saw four years ago. Of the older sister badding her up. Okay. Have you seen that video? We're on the oh, train. They're on the train. It? It's, it's resurfaced because of this. The older sister telling her, like, any guy is trying to call my sister again. She's 14 years old. She's been lying about her age and so on. And, like, no one will be contacting her. And she started shouting at her little sister. This video went viral, but everyone's forgot about this girl. And four years later, mm-hmm. we come to find that this 14 year old is not 18, is this girl. Oh, wow. So it's like there's things that was going on there when the sister explained, like, you know what? From age 14, whatever, she was running out at home all the time, going to stay elsewhere for two weeks, going to stay here for one week. Her mum was at the end of her tether. Even when she said she caught her on the train that time, it's because she went to a house party and found out where the house party was and took her because yeah, the sister was lying still. about her age sort wow. of thing. So you can tell already from then that, I know we don't know the situation, but there was already some sort of trouble going yeah. on in the first place. So, in this, But I heard that she was living in a, a mother and oh, baby, baby unit, yeah. so... Either, like, I don't know, either the baby was already dead mm-hmm. or there's something because you can't leave your baby and no one would have heard the baby crying. Exactly the baby's right. hungry, the baby wants to eat. So so either the baby's already dead when you bought it there and then you've gone off because you think, oh my God, well, h- how am I going to, in that panic and you've mm-hmm. come back six days later because you already know what's happened. Like I said, this is all speculation. So I could be wrong, this girl. This is like, not factual. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. factual. So this is just me speculating anything could be possible. And, all we can say really prayers to her and her family and hopefully the baby can find justice for whatever's happened. Yeah, definitely. Like, I was, because when I obviously, you know, it gets when you first hear something like that you're in your yard. Look at this little what girl. Yeah. What up to this girl, man? Before she stay in her ass, but she go and dance. Yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. then hindsight's always a good thing, isn't it? Because then you get time to think about it. And then you think, if she had a daughter, she must have cared about her daughter or she wouldn't have had a daughter. Mm. It's that simple. Because mm. you don't have to keep your child. It's the education as well. And mental we, health. That also is, plays a factor. Also, child pregnancy and also the fathers. Like, sometimes men, we don't take responsibility, you know? 100%. Like, me having... My first child was born while I was in jail. Like, my first daughter, and she was born while I was in jail. I just posted post a video of her just now because I just ju- went to drop her to her cousin's house. And I never got to experience that whole bonding with her for me being in jail. And I didn't realise how hard it must have been for her mum doing it all alone sort of thing. Because now with my partner, with our child, who's now two years old, I see how hard it is. When she leaves me with the baby and she goes off on, on a holiday and I'm stuck with the baby and the baby's looking at me, she wants hungry, she wants to change it. I know, I, I see how hard it is. So sometimes, it's, now for an 18-year-old girl to have to deal with that by herself, still being a kid, 
herself. Definitely. It's stressful. It's hard. One hundred percent. It's stressful. It's hard. My sister, my sister's um, got twins and a, and a son, and I get onto her sometimes. Cause like, but when you're there, you see how the twins are always active. The young one, so it is hard. It is difficult to as 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 mothers to do with the children yeah, on your own, own all the definitely. time. One hundred percent. You also want your social life. You want okay? Can I go out and just have a breather, sort of thing? So I can't. We don't know what's happened with this young girl, but I can I can imagine the stress that is raising being a single mother on your own at that age. Wow. Like Eighteen, mate. Mm. That is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Sad situation still. Very sad. That is crazy. So what? Very what sad. other than your big media Hackney Wick? What else you got going on? Oh, there's quite a few. I mean, when I first met you guys, I was filming uh, Speed Daters, and the whole reason for Speed Daters is a bit of a reality show about black women because everyone watches Love Island and. I don't watch it, but my missus always got a comeback. She'll be complaining, oh, the black girl never got picked. She's just standing there looking awkward. So I was like, you know what? Why not I create a show where a black girl has to get picked? Yeah. So it's a, a show that follows black women around, whatever careers they're doing, and then takes them on a date in, in a, on a speed dating night with other men, other black men as well. Season one done okay. Season two has been proven difficult, especially because of COVID. So mm-hmm. I just messaged the girls literally about an hour. I said, you know what? No more filming is being done. We're just going to film the date night now because I can't bother to be doing this. So much time has passed and I've not released an episode for like maybe two months now. It doesn't make okay. sense. And then uh, Younger TV, they're based on Sky. Yep. So I've uh, just um, done a deal with them to start broadcasting my football team's matches on there as well. Oh, so sick. Slowly, slowly, just trying to do and different you got things. The, and you, you got the, what's the hood to hood? The hood? Is it the hood to hood? Yeah, yeah, the, the hood to hood football matches. So basically how it started... In 2018, I done a celebrity all star match where I had the likes of um, Dappy, Joe Black, Clue, Kojo, Funds, Young Teth, that whole load of people. If I didn't say your name, apologies. <laughs> but it all came together. We had the Olympic Stadium, had like a big match. I, I watched that. Yeah. So yeah I 100% yeah, watched that. We had a big match, and then I thought, right, this actually brought a lot of people together. I mean, some artists like, oh, I can't come because this art is going to be there. And that's when I realised, like, right, we need some more unity, man. Mm-hmm. So done that one, which is successful. And then I done two last year and like we went viral because there's one where high point tricky having a big argument. Yep, <laughs> I remember that one in the, in the changing room. Change yeah, room. I remember that one. And, and yeah, so it's just a thing that we would do regular. And then I decided to do the 32 Borough Cup. London has 32 boroughs. Mad. Kids from Southwark don't want to go to Lewisham. Kids from Bromley don't want to go to Croydon. I said, you guys don't even know you guys could just be brothers and friends. You don't even know it because you just live separate. But I, I said, I'm going to bring all these kids together and have a two, two-day tournament. So we hired out one set of flats. And they were telling me, it's going to be a bloodbath, man. This ain't like the celebrities. This is like young kids, 16 to 18. You're bringing them from different areas. But every single borough turned up. We had two days. It was all fun. And then Enfield Town won it. And so Enfield Borough won it. And the guys who from Enfield Borough actually won it are now first team players for my football team. The manager who won the cup with them is actually now our first team manager. And these are the sort of things, opportunities we try to bring. See that? Big move, man. And from the back of it, I said, you know what? Let me do, let me get these guys actually representing their boroughs. I said, you know what? I'm going to do hood to hood matches where I'm going to get teams from a whole different area. So go and meet a team from a whole different area just to show these young people, like, right, you know what? The olders are now going to these different areas and they're mixing and they're getting along. They don't have to be, I mean, there's certain areas that where I can't do, I can't do. Common versus the field. Definitely, it's not gonna work. It won't work. Yeah. Yeah. It just I can't do Church Road and Stonebridge. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not gonna happen. <laughs> There's certain ones I can't, but I want to make sure that I can do different ones just to show people like, right, you know what? We can get yeah. along. We gotta yeah. get a Lewisham Peckham. Gen- nah, Lewisham Peckham. Yeah, Lewisham Peckham. Yeah, Lewisham Peckham. Yeah. I think yeah, that's the next one. That, that we, we have to. We have Lewisham to. Lewisham I would. Peckham. I would. I would even if it doesn't happen this year, I'll do it next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, 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 but I'll definitely be management or something. I'd love that. Would be a big. That would no, be a 100%, big thing. Hundred percent. Let's, so, yeah, let's, let's make that happen. happen. You get me. You got anything up, else to say? You've been quiet today. You've been doing all this. I've been listening to the. <laughs> you've been some gems right now. <laughs> you've been quiet. But yeah, um, someone, someone, someone was all out shopping the other day and see you in Sports Direct, big man. Yeah, no, like, so, that was me it, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what? This is. It's ironically, isn't it? Last night I went to buy football boots because you heard us cussing about my my football group mm. and that I rich you waste man <laughs> I, listen so yesterday I went to buy football boots about half six last night mm. and I didn't notice you on the way in mm. I don't know why but I just walked in usual brought my boots came out and I looked and you're just on the poster with with a bunch of people at the, at the sports yeah, direct nah, it's, all, it's, all, it's all mad because like I said when Nike reached out to us and said look oh, we love what you're doing I guess now the UK team started thinking oh 
why are we, why are we not tapped into this? So when the kit sold out, they're like, right, there's actually quite affiliation and people actually like this team. So I build a, a, a friendship with people like that. So even the head of brand design follows my page now and everything like that as well. So we build up a, a, a relationship. So when they're trying to do these um, campaigns, they want to do one of the new England kit was meant to be for the Euros, but obviously COVID cancelled the Euros mm-hmm. this year. They're about to tell a journey of different people in London who are doing great things within their communities. And I was one of those guys that was picked. So through the back of that, we've done all the shoots. And then they told me, yeah, it's in Night Town. It's in, like, even people from Peckham tell me, yo, I see you the other day. I see you. The... And even, not even that one, like, even in prisons, people send us my posters in prisons where it just shows, this was, like, happened, like, two years ago, where it just shows the transition of someone that's come out of jail Full and circle. changed their life quickly. Because I think that's been the biggest thing, that's seen how quickly I've done it. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, there's times where you're stressed. There's times you think, raw, I can just go and tick a box. Or I could just go and... <laughs> But it's not worth nah, it, bro. bro. It's not worth it, bro. Because you need to have willpower. You need to understand. Look at the consequence. Okay, I can take this box and go and flip it and make food money from it. Now, how long is that gonna last? How long is oh, that yeah, last? Flip another box. And then the consequences mm. that comes with it. Then I'm back in jail. And I say Definitely. myself, like, no. I tell my Mister, there be times where, and I think sometimes you have to be honest as well. I think as men, we struggle to be honest with uh, about our finances and stuff. I tell if my, if, if this month's looking shaky, I'll be like, babe. This month is looking shaky, you know. Male I mean, ego and pride. Yeah, definitely. this this month's looking shaky, and she will go. She'll be pissed. Oh, what you mean? I'm like, look, this is. But what, 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 what can she do? She understands because when you work for yourself, that's completely different. Mm-hmm. But there's so much people make excuses like, oh, you know what? And they'll start cussing off their baby mom and not see their own kids now because of pride and ego. She's calling you, say, look, the baby needs this, the baby needs that, or the kids need this, and because of your own ego. You're gonna start arguing with her and then not see your kids intentionally because you don't wanna go. He says, Look, I've not got it. I can still take the kids out to go to the park. Mm. But men don't wanna do that because of the ego. Because you maybe used to have money back in the day. Times have changed. Times have changed. I told everyone the time. I've been that guy. Like when mm. I like when I say to you, when I 2016, mm. end of 2016, and I'm not ashamed to say this, mm. my first job. I went to Sainsbury's mm. for Christmas and was doing nighttime mm. work. So that was that was that struggle, and it's like what you say: things happen by things. I don't know. God, God's always there, and He's always got a plan. And I always say this: I'm one of His favorites mm. because I was working in Sainsbury's, and of it, when I started that job, it wasn't it wasn't nothing great. I was making a little money, but I didn't have. I was working nights, mm. so daytime I'm sleeping, and I'm working nights. Mm. I don't really need too much, so I was mm. kind of content. Mm. So I tried to I tried to get a permanent job, and that was a Christmas thing. They said no. Mm. That was January. Then about three days after they turned me down, I was with one of my little cousins. His mum phoned him and said, oh, there's a gas engineering course. Mm. Do you want to do it? But I was just I was just with him and just mm. managed to hear the phone call. Mm. So I was like, yo, mm. how long's the course? She was like six to eight months. I was like, what? Six to eight months to be an engineer? She was like, yeah. I said, look, I'm doing it. Mm. I'm, I'm doing this. Sign me up. So 10 of us, 10 of us went down there to sign up. Um, I was the only one that finished. No. The only one out of the 10 of us. My, my cousin who started it with me, he's in jail now. Mm. Um, other people dropped off. A couple other people went to jail. Halfway through that course, uh, my my tutor kind of took a shine to me. Like he just, mm. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was my determination or whatever. He took a shine to me. There was interviews for a job going. Mm. He said to me, go for the interview. Mm. Me being me, coming from the road, bro, I'm not ready for that. Are you nuts? I ain't even finished the course. Like, mm. I'm not on that. Mm. Nathan, go and do it. Mm. You're ready. I'm telling you, you're ready. He told me to go home, research certain things, go to the interview. I've never been in an interview. Mm. So I've gone there, I've researched what he's told me. I've gone to this interview. I was so petrified. Mm. Petrified, like... I don't like like something like I was gonna lose mm. if I didn't get it, and you know what? I might have lost my head if I didn't get it. Do you get what I mean? So it was kind of like it was kind of a it was a desperate situation. You get me? Went in there, and I'm not gonna lie to you. After being in there for 15 minutes, I aced the interview. I was so I was in there so confident that at the end of the interview, he even came up in the interview mm. because the guy who interviewed me had been teaching gas mm. in the prison system. And I was like, oh yeah, one of my friends did it a long time ago. He works for SGN, he's been doing it, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And he was, at the end of the interview, I got up and I said to him, when do I start? Mm. 
She get what I'm <laughs> saying. Confident and he, already, yeah, I was, I was so confident. Mm. So I got that job. That was, I started work there 217. 2019, I won National Apprentice of the Year for the whole country. Come on, man. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So, and that's been my struggle. But like back to it, when I stopped doing road and I was doing my gas, I was doing the gas calls and I was working, I was doing demolition work, hardest work I've ever done in my life. Mm. I was on 280 pound a week and I was studying on Saturday and Sundays. And I tried to, I tried, I, when I got the opportunity, once I realized what I had, I tried to bring in all my people like, yo, you man, this gas thing, it's a way forward. Like man ain't got to do road. Like come, man can get, man, man, man can earn money. Mm. Man can earn good money. You can mm. still buy yourself a pair of, mm. a pair of lubes and, and, mm. and, a, and, a, and a whatever, you know, but mm. you can do it legally. Mm. Every single man, apart from one man, no, two men that I've brought on this course, whoever so started it and, and wasn't fully in it, you know, every single one of them went to jail. Fucking hell. Big up Moors, big up Rico. They're the only two men that I brought there that finished it. They, everyone else that was half-hearted, mm. half in, half out, they all ended up with big sentences, bro. Mm. You got, and I tell people this all the time you got to go through uncomfortable times and struggle to get to change. 100%. You can't just get to change. It doesn't just happen. You have to go through struggle and uncomfortability. You know what I mean? And it, bro, I'm here now. I'm living proof of it. Like life's good now. I'm not saying I'm a millionaire or nothing, but I don't look over my shoulders. I'm not in my house waiting for police. Like it's all I good. Say, like, in life, we need basic stuff, right? Shelter, food, warmth and family. And those are basic things you need. We don't really need the lubes and the, what you call it? They're nice to have, but technically you can go out in, in, in clothes from Primark and you look decent enough because girls, really, girls are not really looking, okay, this is this brand, this is that brand. You present yourself in a nice way, you're cool. Don't get me wrong, there's these Instagram models who are looking for, yeah, look for certain course. things and, and, and so on. But if you look at the means of what we need in life, it's not much. And you but can't we, buy and swag. Was, yeah, yeah. You can't buy yeah, swag. 100%. No matter what you put on. Mm. I see I see a lot of people on telly they wear expensive clothes, but mm. it don't look good. Mm. It don't look right. Like, mm. but that's 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 the real story or the truth. Like no man, even if, like I said, like I've I've come here, but I'm even inspired by your story. You understand? I'm Thank inspired you, by that as well. Cause this is just reason, this is within the last three years. Yeah. But that's and you're someone that's older than me. And if you're doing this at your age, there's so much people out there who make excuses. And I said it earlier on before we started filming, like anything you want to learn, it's all on the internet. The yeah. internet is an encyclopedia of everything. If today I say, you know what, I want to become a computer engineer, there will be someone to show me from level one all the way to expert level on, on, on the so. internet. But people don't want to utilize that. They're rather, okay, I'm going to go and buy a weed and smoke and then wake up at five o'clock in the morning. and like. The weed thing, boy, yeah. I, I've only recently stopped smoking weed. Mm. Last like five, six weeks, mm. I've stopped smoking weed. And... I, I, what, have you found it easy to do? The reason behind it made it a lot easier. Mm. Cause I, the reason behind it made it a lot easier. So it wasn't easy though. Mm. First five days was but you're being very productive. Too. Torture. Mm. First five days was sweats, nightmares, couldn't mm. sleep, kicking walls, all types of stuff. That but productivity, that's yeah. Out of it. What what mm. we've achieved? What I've achieved since I've stopped doing that? I do. I I never believed it while I was smoking weed, mm. but I do believe. Weed is a, I wouldn't say it's a big demotivator. Mm. Because like, I'll do it tomorrow. Josh. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do, do it, it tomorrow, tomorrow thing, innit? Mm. And it tomorrow never comes because as mm. soon as you wake up tomorrow, the yeah, first thing you do mm. is smoke again. So put that off till tomorrow. Mm. It's a, it, it's a, it's, it demotivates. Some people can work on it perfectly fine. But me now being out of that bubble mm. and looking at myself, it was a big demotivational thing for me because I don't even know if this would have been possible if yeah. I did, if I didn't stop smoking weed. Like that's the reality of it. Some, but so, but you have to know yourself to know these things, innit? Knowledge of self is 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 key in everything. Mm. If you don't, if you don't know, you can't do better. 100%. You understand what I'm saying? So it was a big thing for me, man. But, Onto a little bit more banter now. Hmm. I see that the whole stone the chick thing, and I see you was art felt about this. Yeah, thing. I see it. I see it. You were passionate about it. Still, still, We can't take away what he's done. Like. Headline Glastonbury, that's a massive. He's pictures all the National Portrait Gallery. That's massive. Banksy made him this whole thing. That's massive. Yeah. But it don't count for shit if you don't respond. No. It don't and, count and for shit musician, if you don't respond. Definitely. If you're a musician and chips come at you hard like that, you need to respond. Like I said, we all might be just saying this and he's already got something in the back line and he's doing it in his own strategic way. Mm. But he needs to hurry up with it because he was he gave he gave he gave, <laughs> he gave Wiley 
He gave Wiley 24, 24 hours, hours, 48 hours, and all now, nothing. Yeah, all Perfect. Now, nothing. But do you think, I was watching something, because somebody was like, he couldn't have been riding out in his own car. It couldn't have been a man going there. He's Stormzy. And it made sense. No, 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 no. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't go to ride out. Yeah. But he went to maybe embarrass him. Mm-hmm. Or, because you don't want to go there with them, them brothers. You don't, even, you don't even need to go there. Yep. You don't need to go there at all. You go, oh, chip, chat, shit, cool. But for you to travel all the way to Essex to what, talk with him? I went to, yeah. Yeah, you went to either bad him up, yeah, give him yeah, a few yeah. little slaps or... or Make it look stupid online mm-hmm. or something. You, you, you didn't go there for no reason. It's funny that because you see, like he's opened his own kind of worms, isn't he? Mm. Because off of the back of that, I'm now hearing that Stormzy's a cokehead. Disclaimer: I'm not saying it's true. I said I heard it's a rumor. It's not a hundred. I'm not saying that he is. I'm saying I heard that. I don't know how true it is. I don't know how true it ain't. Just I'm just saying that I heard. And these are things that had he not gone there, maybe kept it to just music. These are the questions. These are questions that wouldn't be asked. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I've not heard that, and I wouldn't even want to speculate <laughs> on, on that at all. So, Stormzy, I, I don't know nothing about that. I'm, I'm not going to speculate on that. But what I would say, he just needs he needs to respond. And like I said, if you're in the, if you're in the media, if you're in the media spotlight, there's always going to be different things and different rumors and the come Hundred percent. Sometimes. Keep it quiet. I, can't, I don't think you ever see Jay Z ever respond to anything that someone says about him. Just keep it quiet and over. Even with any controversial thing that comes up on social media, there'll be uproar. Oh my God, this person's done this, this person's done that. Leave it a week or two weeks, they're on to the next person. They forgot about you. Will and Jada, everyone's talking about Will, yep. Will Smith and that. Everyone's moved on. Everyone talked about Tion Wayne the other day. Everyone's moved on true, for a while. But, yeah, but we for me personally, he has to. I'm not moving from Stormzy. Yeah. He calls himself no he calls himself the King of Graham. Mm. And the way he went after the man who created this whole genre, like I, I feel like you can't you can't give Wiley not that level of respect mm. and then let Chip do this to you. I was mm. watching something. He said that he did give Wiley some, he, he said he's got a tune on his album named after Wiley, the Wiley flow. So yeah, but he that was... He's giving all Wiley, all the homage. Yeah, no, but no, that was, I think that was a bit... I that, think that was a bit of a... Like, it was a shot as well. It wasn't... It wasn't... It, don't, it wasn't... Yeah. He called it the Wiley flow, but don't think it was... It wasn't a respect... It wasn't a respectful okay. thing. But you know, okay. with, Storm, with, with, with Stormzy, I don't think... I think Wiley started that one. 100%. I don't think Stormzy ever... Because it's like the professional footballers and even like the the, the old school rappers and so, like right now. The money professional footballers get now compared to what the old professional footballers you always hear them cussing oh look at these kids man I oh, didn't earn so much doing so much so for Wiley's point of view you can say like oh, I paved the way for this thing I didn't bloody go and do Glastonbury yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, why yeah. does my man just come out of the blue and all of a sudden he's doing this yeah, nah that's not so I can see that from Wiley's point of view there's hate in there there's been, you, you might like the kid but there's, definitely. There's, there's, there's definitely a bit of hate in definitely. there and after he's seen this and see, oh now Storms are doing this again Storms are doing this again so he probably popped off now nah, fuck this kid and then Storm was like, wait, wait a minute. Like, I've always ever paid you respect. What's going on? So at the end of the day, he had his back up and said whatever he had to say to Wiley. So uh, as much as Wiley, we respect him for what he's done and achieved. He was moving a little bit salty. And Storms, he yeah, checked yeah. him for that being that salty. But at the same time... Wiley's a salty guy, though, isn't he? Yeah, he but at the same time, like Storms, he has to reply to Chip. Yeah, I think even with Chip, it's kind of similar where he's looking at like, oh, I got flows for days. I got it. And remember, Chip had his turn, you know? Chip had his, he was doing songs with Pizza Boy and all them things yeah, way yeah. before, like we yeah. all meet me yeah. on that way yeah, before yeah. Storms was yeah. even when I was, known. When I was when I was in jail, Chip, um, Tinchy Strider, they mm. were they were the big man. In, in, for, imagine, so I went to jail two thousand and eight. Yeah, there was a little scene, but it wasn't yeah, nothing I mean, like Tinchy Strider was number one in two thousand and nine and all right. That. So mm. when I've got into jail and I've really got into my sentence because they gave me a seven and a half at that time. The music, the English music scene exploded mm. while I was in jail. I left, what, what was it? What one was it? Um, Talking the Hardest. Mm. That was like, that summer, when Talking the Hardest was the maddest tune, that was the summer I, that was the summer I went to jail. Same, 2007, I think. 2008, okay, I, went, I went. Maybe, same, yeah. yeah, I went, yeah, I went 2008. Then by the time 2009 came, there was a whole scene. Now, I have to big up gigs and I always will because he's a man, man he's a man that man was beefing and whatever and whatever. He's a Peckham boy, I'm a ghetto boy, whatever, whatever. So for me, sitting in jail, watching him from a mixtape that I was mm. playing in my car, Boomsville, all of them mm. things there, to seeing him on 
he, um, what's it called? Channel 4, 4 G4. Music. Mm. 4 yeah. Music with Professor Green, mm. Tinchi. That was, for me, imagine, I don't even know what's going on because mm. they sent me Waylon. Mm. Waylon, you can't get mixtapes, you can't get none mm. of that stuff. Once you're in there, you're in there. Mm. So to see the growth of even just him, like it's insp- that was mad inspirational mm. for me. That was like, raw, like, this thing's really happening. Mm. And these are things that, as a gang member, you know, like, you, man, at MC, whoever's MC is a nerd, man. They're mm. not on what man's on. Mm. But man saw a vision and man pushed it, bro. Mm. Yes. And they were really in the streets. Mm. It, it, man was really out here. Mm. Like, I always say that about him. Mm. And that's what, for, for me, it's like, we grew up together. Like, his, my older brother and his older brother, my younger brothers and his brothers and so on. Same. It, and for me, I was inspired. I, mean, I, I was in jail, like, repping Peckham. Like, yeah, they, they're like, yeah, those are my people my. from Peckham sort of thing. That I, I, could we grew up in the same Gloucester estate sort of thing. So for me, seeing that and the whole transition, that's what I all tell these Jews now. Right now, you guys got it better than anyone has ever had it. Definitely. You can go out and create your own channels, your own platforms, yeah. your own music, oh, where the struggle, these guys have opened up the doors. And why I, I respect it so much is that you look at Nines, you look at uh, Potter Paper, they didn't have to change their styles. They done old school hip hop bars. They didn't have to go and go to the drill thing. They didn't have to go and try to make it pop. And they got number one and number three album. So those things there. And so when you look at Chip now, for example, as much as I rate him, for me, Chip as a lyricist is my top number one. Okay. However, he don't make the music that people are going to go and buy or people are going to listen to in the clubs. 100%. Or people are going to be putting in their car and listen to. I'll listen to, I'll put, put a paper and put it in a car. I ain't listen to Chip, but he's still my favourite lyricist. Definitely. So he can look at this way and I think like, rah, Storm's in there, man. I just like, I had this <laughs> and I've dropped the ball. And now these men have got the ball. So I can see why there is hate towards Stormzy. But Storm's at the same time, you okay. have to respond. The head is always, the head is always heavy that wears the crown. He said it himself. Mm. The head is always heavy, man. It's, it's, it's that, that goes for anything in life. Mm. If you're the best footballers, people want to be the best mm. footballer. If you're I the best at anything, people want to be the best, innit? Mm. I don't think anybody gets up to say, oh, I'm all right with being mediocre. Mm. Well, there is people that do that, yeah. but no, nah, ambitious people ain't, ain't settling for mediocre. That's that's just not how this thing goes. You see, I saw them look their top five last time. So who you, you guys, for example, say is your top five lyricists? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not five last time, so. No, you, 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 wait, you do yours and we'll get... Because yeah, 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 you know yeah, what? Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. I messed up last yeah, week. I messed, I, I messed up. Mm. So let me hear yours and then I'll give you mine because I messed up. I said, for me, Chip, even yep. though I don't listen to his music, I'm just, if, if they say, okay, two people go in the booth right now and spit, Chip's winning. Right? I got, for me, Chip gets and then... It's whoever. See? It's whoever next. I rate them chat there. So Gets was in my, in my Yeah, he was. He was. Mm. Go on then. Oh, Just go, go, yeah, oh, do it yeah, again, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Be, be, you've be been asked. Wretch, it's going to be a wretch chip Gets for me. Do you know what? Last week, I, I put in um, Meeks, Meeks. And, and Meeks is not, um, he's not consistent enough for me right now. Obviously, he's still new to what he's doing, in it? So I have to drop him out and I have to put in Dave. Because Dave is actually a really hard lyricist. I've heard his new stuff, old stuff. He's hard. And then the boy Millions. That's my Ooh, new Oi, oi. No, don't try and nick me. <laughs> 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 I'm doing it. That's my top Oi. No, you know, we know with uh, Millions, yeah? He's just different with it, you know? Very. He just, di- you know what? You just gave me an idea. Because, yeah, you have to do that. Like, forget that the old school people, like the new wave. He's, because... Because he's so lyrical with it and does it in a fun way. Like, you know, what school of language this boy mm. went to? Lagger. But he's hard mm. with it. He, listen, he's, anyway, you know the links already. Mm. That's my people's people yeah. from Birmingham and all of that and so all anyway, of that. Can we um, all right, cool. Wretch, Chip, Kano, Millions, and last week, you know, I don't know why I said it, this I know I'm just a messed up you. I, I weren't smoking or nothing, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just a mess in it. But pot papers got to be in there. Mm. Pot papers got to be in there. And uh, last week I said no, nah, I was I mean the nerving, but I've been listening to Training Day Three again yeah, continuously, it, and he right. has to be in there. Like I said, he he is our Styles P. Mm. When it comes to this mixtape thing, 2004 Styles P, that's what Potter is. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That's that's where I put Potter. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to do the raw rugged stuff the way Potter does it. Mm. That's how I feel about but it. Been banging training day three. I haven't, you know. You, you know, know what? You need no, no, no. I, I, no, no. Okay. I, 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 I fuck with Potter. Yeah, and 
what is even miss was telling me that I need to have a day where I just sit down and, and just listen, listen to music. Yeah, 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 just listen yeah, to yeah. music because I'm non-stop active. Mm -hmm. I'm non-stop active. But what I do though, I do go and purchase everyone's stuff. Because okay. so, for me, it's like, if we don't support each other, like, what does it What's mean? Because people are supporting me buying my football kids and doing so whenever I can, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go and buy a man's CD. Like, Yo, you don't buy CDs anymore. I'm going to go and stream my man's thing. I'm going to go mm -hmm. in those things, but I've not had a chance to actually listen to anything new for ages. Whatever comes up, on the socials and that, I'll go, oh, let, me, let me go on YouTube quickly and listen to that. But at the same time, I actually, like when, when the concerts and that are there, I'll go and buy tickets. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, there. Yeah. Hey, DB. See you on your next day off. Mm. Please do. No, I, no, no. I, I, but you know what it is? He's well. my people's people, man. Yeah. Young, you see DBE, Young Ads is an absolute beast, you know. Mm. Like, don't sleep. Because he's part of a group, I, I don't think he gets the recognition that he deserves as a lyricist. That's a bit like I said, I said the other day about Crypt and people tell me that Conan's better, but I said about Crypt, I think because in the Juro. But you know what? With Young Ads, because he's gone so far away from what he used to do, yeah. people are just used to him doing this um, sort of flowy stuff now. So for me, for example, I like their music, but I can't have too much of it because it's too much like that, that, that whole America sort of thing. But I've seen some of his old school stuff of him just spitting bars. He's hard. Yeah, very, hard. man. Yeah, very. Gets new tune. Gets his one. Yeah. Uh, IC3 No where's Where's Gets oh, I've never seen you him You hear about the situation That happened the other day I, I said I got arrested got, Yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Car got crashed And then obviously He just come hopping out From around the corner mm. And he's like Yeah this is my car But I weren't driving it He gave me his car And he put out a tune about it But okay. he's saying In the tune He's declaring his, his, his thing He's saying It weren't me mm. Me personally Gets I love you And I rate you in it I believe it was you. you know? so I, 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 it too, you know? I, I respect it. Like, you come around the corner all innocent. Like, yeah, so, like, my mates just crashed my car and I've come around to chat to you guys. My car. And, mm. You get me? So that's a new tune you got to take. <laughs> I've never still. seen that one. Like, that was his reply saying, why reply on the net like when I can put a tune out? And mm. he's done it. And the tune's actually really hard. So in terms of you guys being from Lewisham, then, in terms of the young people out there right now, who who you guys keeping your ears to? Do you keep cause like me in Peckham? I hear that I hear some of the Zone Two stuff, but I guess there's a whole other new wave that comes underneath that. Is, or is there anyone that you guys are looking at? Oh, look this kid here! And you would you ever guys think that you know what? There's also money in this. Why don't we open up a music studio and patent some of these use? Like come in here, we got a studio for you guys, management and so on. Definitely. See with the drill thing, I don't really take in drill in it. Mm. It's hard for me to take it in, and I do it because obviously I've got kids of a certain age. Mm. And I don't really agree with certain things they talk about in drill, but sometimes I walk in the house and my kids are beating off drill tunes and I just think, where do I stand with this? Mm. You understand? Some of these kids are hard. It's a new age. This is their new age way of, mm. of spitting or whatever, but I don't really take in the drill stuff. The, from, for Lewisham, right now, young artist, GB Records, T... T what's her name? Tizando. Tizando. Yeah. She is immensely talented. Mm, What's yeah. his name? I, I song. He's I song. As well, I song's well. And he's Diz. come with a whole different film. Um Who else in the area is doing their thing? I actually got an interview coming up with Coley still soon. Once he's patterns everything, we'll have an interview with him soon. Yeah, who else is doing their thing? Young boys. That young Pino. Young Digger Pino. Digger D. Yeah, Digger. Dig, dig, dig Sorry. Dig that. Yeah, yeah. Oi, 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 oi. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? Oi, oi. I told you, I'm not really into your stuff, but... Eight-way. No, nah, dig that eight-way. And um, leaks. Buki. Mm. Leaks. You understand? Mm. Them man there, I'm pushing them hard. Mm. All, all open carry Barry. I'm waiting for him to come out. You lot will hear from him soon. Um, Yeah. Yeah, they're the ones, man. They're the ones that, I'm, that I've, that I've got my eye I always, on. I also say that not just music, you know, people have to think outside the box. We say think outside the blocks with, with our campaign, but like, it don't always have to be music, you know. Books, like there's money in books. A whole industry, you know? cameras. There's a whole industry, like there's so much things you can do. Audio books. Production. Yeah. Like you guys are doing, you guys have got your production stuff now. You can do shows behind the scenes, different things, just different ideas, different concepts. Money, there's money in YouTube, there's money in advertising, like, as this pops off, which I'm sure is going to do, tell people like, yo, you, you want to be a sponsorship on that? Yeah, you have your banner on here as well. Like, there's so much different things, different business avenues that people can make just about thinking and and also having a team. Also about having a team and working together. Because what it is sometimes when you work with a the man, then people team, turn to, team, to fall out over things. Never do it for the money first, I always say. 100%. Do it for the love of what you guys want to do, your camaraderie, and then the money will come. One girl the other day that she started working with me on certain things, I told her, look, there's no money. 
all it is about giving you opportunities to get yourself out there. We've got something coming up with Younger TV. I'm going to get you to start doing broadcasting for them. Younger TV said, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy to have her. So, turn around the other day and say, oh, what's the budget? I need money for this. I'm like... I just told you the other day, like, it's all about, you know, well, I don't think I can, I can have time to do this. I'm like, cool, no worries at all. Mm-hmm. I said, if you do things, first and foremost, looking for money, it don't come. Yeah, yeah. Even you're passionate about, I was passionate about football. So I was standing outside in a call from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. because I was passionate about it. 100%. And then all of a sudden, because of that hard work, the money comes. So money will come to anything that happens that is good and it's happening with good intentions as well. Definitely, man. Believe there's talent on every road. And Definitely. Load of roads, you get me? So yeah, there is a lot there's, of talent in there. That, like, like what you said, the, the the internet, the whole big ego media, like things like that. Like, there, the, there's so much opportunities. You ain't got to be a footballer no more. Mm. You ain't got to be a drug dealer for sure. You definitely ain't got to be a footballer. You can be a sound engineer, producer. There's so much. You don't have to be a rapper. You ain't got to be in the spotlight. You don't. There's money behind the scenes. There's love. Like find some work. Work is only something you're not passionate about. Mm. Something you're passionate about and enjoy is not work. Mm. It's fun. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So if you can find your passion and something that you enjoy, you won't, it will never be a chore to get out of bed. You won't get out of bed feeling like you do when you get up to go Mm. work. It's it's a completely different feeling. Mm. You get what I mean? Even if you do hustle, hustle to fund your dream. Mm. Understand me? And that you live in your dream. You get me? No one wants to be hustling forever. So even if you do have a good hustle where you're out there hustling, Hustle to fund your dream. Put down your hustle yeah, and go right? find something else. And man. that's real. Don't follow this fool. <laughs> Put yeah, down your, no, don't follow this brother. Anything. Work's a hustle. You get me? You could work to try and fund your dream. You don't want to be what, working what, for what, someone. What, what, for the rest yeah, of one life, thing they say like, it's okay to work for someone because you work nine to five, you work for someone. But don't just work for someone without even putting half an hour into a day trying to work on your own well, stuff no, as definitely. well. Definitely. So even if you've got like a dream. portfolio, you write something, okay, on my diary, this is what I want to do. Half an hour, the next day, another half an hour, next day, another half an hour. By the end of the year, you got a whole book of different things you want Definitely. to do. You know what? Definitely. You I are the first Peckham boy we've had on our show. Okay. And I have to ask you this question. Mm. How did Blue Story represent Peckham for you? It's going to sound mad. I've never even finished it. Oh. <laughs> I've never yeah. finished it. Busy, and the thing busy, is, busy. Ratman's my guy as well. Because like, this, 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 this is the crazy thing about it is that and how much your life can transition. 2019, last year, I got an email. The Prime Minister is inviting me to Downing Street. I was like, what? Like, this is mad. So I just thought, on the actual day, I just thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to go there. And they went, oh, no, you're on a panel. You, rap man, and Jamal Edwards. So we had to wow. sit down and talk to all the kids. So I'm sitting there with these three guys. I'm like, wait, these guys, you've done Blue Story. You've got SBTV. I just come out of jail. Like, what are they on? They're like, nah. Like, we want you to be there as well because of what... So it's mad. And I see Ratman a couple of times again when I see him, um, my sister graduated. I think he had a family member graduating on the same day as well. And like from what he's done and sort of transpired and gone on, but I'm hearing a lot of people from Lewisham are not happy with um, Blue Story. I've not, I've st- I st- I remember putting it on, okay, we're going to watch this, but I was just so tired and knackered in that day. I've not, but you know what? As you said this, after training today, me and my sister are going to watch it because she actually, because she's from Lewisham and she actually went and watched it twice, I think. So, yeah. I've watched it. I've watched it. Obviously, for me, I lived it, innit? So my views would be different. But I wouldn't say that I'm not happy with it. I would say that that's somebody else's perspective of it. Mm. It's not my perspective. Mm. It's not how I saw it. Because I, obviously I never made the film, innit? Mm. But that's his perspective. Mm. Everyone, for that, everyone's, everyone's versions, interactions and stories are going to be different. Mm. Ratman's version and story is different to mine mm. because he's not me. Mm. So I'm not, not happy with it. I do like it. I, I do think, I, at the same time, I do believe, I know why a lot of people are upset because probably feel like he should have consulted with a lot of people. And obviously, if you're if you're making a film, research purposes or whatever, if you're, mm. like you said, mm. they brought the rights to your story. Mm. They have to speak to you about mm. that because it's research. He doesn't have to do anything. But, but, he but, doesn't but, owe anyone. But I get, yeah, I, I get Ratman's point because even when I started doing these stories on Peckham, I'll get... All the Peckham guys calling me and calling this people. Like, well, I don't know my man. Where was he from? He was, and this brother, no, that was my man's little brother, and, and so on. So even to the point that where people wasn't even sure who's much older. That people my generation know exactly who I am. Other people, they'll be like, oh, how come you be talking about Peckham? You didn't mention this person, that person, and this person. I'm like, bro, you guys are good six, seven years older than me. I don't know. I don't know your story to tell your story. Exactly. I only can tell the story from my point of view. So if I tell you the story of when me, Chester, and not came and had a fight in Newcastle, get up, boys, because I was there and that's what I saw. Exactly. I can't say what happened ten years before with other people. 
sort of thing. So 100. I, I get Ratman's point of view. 100. Ratman, rap man, big up Ratman, man. Big he up did. Man for that he done. did. That was Very that well. was amazing, and that, and that, like I said, that even pushed. That pushed both of our boroughs to the mm. front, to the forefront. Mm. That pushed everyone's story I mean, to the what, forefront. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. Do you understand it's what I'm worldwide. saying? Worldwide. That pushed all of our stories. Like, off of that, there's been opportunities for people that mm. people will never understand. Like Jay Z knows about ghetto boys. Do you understand? Mm. Like, Jay Z yeah. knows about ghetto and Peckham boys. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I guarantee you, before rap man, he didn't. Mm. So, mm. I'm thankful to him mm. for telling the story because it needed to be told. But why do you think that people, I'm not, because I, I have heard of quite a few people, I've seen different things come out like, oh, what he doesn't know what he's talking about. Is it, does it come from a place of them just thinking, oh, he don't know, or is like, is, is there a slight bit of hate? Like, why does he get to tell the story? Um, How can I, how can I, how can I, how, I don't want to, Answer this, you gotta sit down with Rap Man and see where he No, but he's asking from. he's asking he's asking why people like it's not, that's nothing to do yeah, with rap. No man. one knows what that's nothing what to do with rap man. No one knows what perspective he was coming at. A lot of a lot of what I've heard fiction it could just be a fictionary thing with a little twist. No, it's from his the and, obviously it's it's obviously it's his view, it's his story. He wrote it down. So it's not it's not a fake story. It might be it might be based on it might not be a hundred percent real. But it's going to be based off of true events because it's Peckham Boys versus Ghetto Boys. Mm-hmm. So, however you want to look at the story, it's definitely based on some truth. Mm-hmm. He might have had to spin a few bits and add a few bits to make it a visual picture, mm-hmm. but it's definitely based on true events. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think the general gist of it is, from what I've heard and whatever, is that he wasn't really involved in the beef like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's not. He wasn't one of the man them, or mm-hmm. he didn't do his little things here and there. But obviously, you always have. In every gang, you have the main heads. Mm. You have the main ones, the main ones that were there doing things, the names that you've heard, mm. the Cravers, the Coleys, the Rascals, whatever, whatever, whatever. They are the main ones that was mm. out there doing whatever. Mm. So obviously, like I said, they feel like if you're going to tell a story about, which is which they would call their life, mm. you should consult with them. Mm. So I, I, get both si- I get both sides of the fence. Mm. I, I understand rap man and I understand the man them. I, mm. I, I understand both sides of it. Me... I'm neutral. I'm happy that he told the story because like I said, he shedded light on something that I think the world needs to know about mm. because for America, this must, that must have been a mad wake up call. Like, mm. hold on, these little, oh, these little London boys are moving like that mm. car. When I would, last time I went to America, I don't even speak the cleanest. I mm. can speak, I, I don't speak bad. Yeah, I think you're posh, yeah. Bro, mm. the brother said to me, I asked the brother for weed. Mm. I said to him, yo, can I get some weed? You 5-0? Say, you know, <laughs> what? He's saying, you 5 oh, you sound, yo, where the white man at? You sound like a white man. I'm saying, bro, <laughs> what are you on about, bro? He's saying, what? Everybody talk like that in England. Everybody chats like me, mm. bro. You lost your mind. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So, in that context, the man them ferrate it because he's brought arting to the forefront. Mm. People, people now pay attention. You could, you, Blue Story has brought so much attention to things mm. that needed to have attention brought mm. to. And that's all due to Rap Man even wanting yeah, to make that no story. Because he didn't need to make that mm, story. Yeah. Let's be real. He no already told Shiro's really story. Mm. He already got the deal with Jay-Z. Mm. He didn't need to do that. Mm. He was already where he was. Mm. So big him up for what he done. 100%. Obviously, sometimes, yeah, you never you, you can't please everyone. Mm. You're never going to... No, if 100%. you go through life trying to please... If everyone's happy with you, you're not doing something right. I always say do things for yourself and what benefits you, yourself and family and the byproduct of what that comes. Because if you... If, you like red and you like green, and I say, okay, I can't do red, I can't do green because he's not gonna be happy. Then you're not being true to yourself. Always be true to yourself and do things how you want to do it, and tell other people that look, you got every opportunity to go out there and make your own blue story. One hundred. That's my thing. story. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. We gotta tie this up. Yeah, been, I'd even realize we've been here for an hour and twenty five minutes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, nice, that's nice, flowing, nice, man. Nice. That's flowing, brother. Thank you so oh. much for coming through. Pick up yourself and yeah, keep pushing. You Love keep that. You, know, you understand? Yeah? That's it, man. We're good to go.